So here we've got the bicycle wheel and we're going to predict the behaviour of this bicycle wheel on this string based on the angular momentum and the torque. So first of all we look at the torque without the wheel spinning. We've got a radial vector here and we've got the weight acting at the centre of mass of the wheel. So if my fingers go in the direction of the radius, they curl in the direction of the weight, my thumb is pointing towards me, which means there is a torque in this direction. If we then spin up the wheel in this direction, so the top of the wheel is coming towards you, then I curl my fingers towards you, my thumb is pointing outwards, and my thumb is representing the angular momentum of the spinning bicycle wheel. So first of all, let's look at it without it spinning. As we predict, without it spinning, the torque means that it just falls. Okay. So now, let's spin up the wheel. So the wheel is coming towards you at the top. The torque is my thumb pointing in my direction. And we see that the wheel spins around the pivot in the direction that we would predict. So let's just look at that again. We had an angular momentum vector pointing this way. We had the torque pointing towards me. So there's my axle representing the angular momentum vector. My torque causes a change in momentum, angular momentum towards me, which means that the axle wants to twist like this. So if we do that once more, we see that the wheel indeed wants to come this way. Angular momentum vector plus the change causes it to rotate in this direction. Okay, so now I'm going to change the side of my wheel. So let's see what happens. So it's now turning in the opposite circle. So now what we have is the radius vector going this way, the weight down, my thumb is pointing outwards. So the torque vector is in this direction. So it wants to change the angular momentum in that direction. But the wheel was spinning towards you, curl my fingers, my thumb is this way. So we have to add the vectors together, nose to tail. So we have an angular momentum vector this way. We have a torque towards you, which means that the axle wishes to twist this way. So remember the axle is representing the angular momentum vector. The torque wishes to point this way in the direction of my finger. And so the resultant of that is from here to the end of my finger is a twist like this. So we add those two vectors, this vector plus this one causes a resultant vector towards you, the wheel twists this way. Let's just spin that up once more. Same again, the wheel is coming towards the top, the wheel at the top is coming towards you, the torque is pointing towards you, the wheel comes this way. So we have to add from the angular momentum vector, we add on the change in angular momentum due to the torque, and that tells us the new position of the axle.